Welcome to another episode of Imuet sponsored 10 Furlongs Magazine's interviews. Thank you for joining us. You're welcome. Thanks for having me. Now, right off the bat, here's a question. How is bustling settling into uh, Cranbourne? He's great. Um, I actually uh, rode him yesterday and I rode beside him this morning. We had uh, Jamie Carr on board this morning. Uh, doing a bit of work on him. Um, she's a rider that we've got in mind as a potential jockey for him in the Everest because he's got a, got a light weight. He's going to get 53 kilograms, a three-year-old. So um, he's going really well, Arkana. He's he's um, he's a very um, athletic horse. Uh, he's very cool. Uh, but at the same time, he's got his quirks. Um, but he's been very straightforward. He's enjoying his training. Um, we're just starting to get a bit serious now. So he's had... Um, obviously we train in Melbourne and he's from Perth and we both mm -hmm. go uh, a, a certain direction. We both go um, anti-clockwise and Sydney, yep. the Everest, yep. they go, they go clockwise. So yep. we've had a couple of clock clockwise gallops recently okay. yep. uh, and he's, he's getting the hang of it. Um, getting his, his lead changes correct. Yep. And yep. on Monday coming this Monday, he'll have his first trial for us. Okay. Uh, and, and then we plan to, um, move him up to Sydney. We've got a small stable there in Sydney, a small satellite stable where okay. he'll then have a second trial and get ready for his first run of the season. Fantastic. And where will his first run be? What is your sort of prep uh, plan? Yeah. So we're, we're very keen to be flexible. Uh, we have, are going to keep our options open, but this stage we think it might be on the 14th of September in the group two run to the Rose. That's at Rose okay. Hill for three-year-olds over 1,200 metres. So there'll be some of the best three-year-olds in the country in that race, okay. uh, of course, which he, he is one of them. Yeah. Um, then we think that most likely two weeks later, he'll run second up in the listed heritage stakes. That's 1,100 for three-year-olds yeah. uh, at Ramwick. And that's, that's um, sorry, that's at Rose Hill. Um, and then that's three weeks then into the Everest. So, we're planning to go to the Everest third run for the season, um, yeah. have him cherry ripe, nice and fit. Uh, just keep him to short distances for the time being. Okay. Um, the other part of our plan is to keep him in three-year-old company. So whilst he's going to the the big dance, the Everest against all comers, yeah. um, he's just turned three and yeah. we feel the, the luxury of having a slot already is that we can just, you know, take our time and, and try and peak our horse and, and meet, the big horses in the big race on the big day yeah. rather than having our grand final before the grand final, so to speak. Makes perfect sense. And uh, what sort of you've, you've had a horse in the Everest. So what have been your learnings from that, that you could possibly apply here? Yeah, you're right. So uh, two years ago we had Jack and O is now standing uh -huh. at Widden stud and he won the golden rose. Um yeah before going three weeks to the Everest. So the Golden Rose is 1,400. Yeah. We then had to come back in distance to 1,200 for the Everest. The Everest was never really a possibility until we won the Golden Rose. Mm -hmm. um, I suppose the learnings were is that um, three-year-olds can run really well in this race. And we've seen Yes, 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 yes. and Giga Kick win the race. And our horse, Giacomo, ran so well. He was beaten a length. He was held up a touch. Um, he ran fifth and probably wasn't an out and out six furlong horse. He, he was better at seven. So I think that gives us confidence that you can win this race with a three-year-old. And yeah. that was, that was the, when, before we purchased bustling, that was our idea was that we thought this horse may be an Everest horse. Yeah. So um, that was the sort of the sell to the new owners that, if we bought this horse, uh, we could go to the Everest with him. And um, we put, um, as a part of the syndicate, we did put um, uh, a couple of the owners that have got an Everest slot already. So yeah. that was a part of the whole idea of of um, purchasing Bustling from Perth is that he, um, you know, I, I think it's a very hard race to win, but I, I do feel myself personally that there is a, a few spots in, the Australian sprinting ranks for the young just turned three-year-olds to step up and become the next wave of Australia's top sprinters. Yep. Um, I hope he's one of them, uh, but there is a few spots, I believe, that um, the next the next wave of young guns coming through. 
Almost there, almost there. And what, um, so you, you said that he's moving from, uh, from, your sta from, from your stable now into Sydney. When does he move from there? When does he go into Sydney? Or yeah, so he's, he's, yeah, so he's going to basically trial, um, trial at our, our Melbourne base at Cranbourne on Monday mm -hmm. over 800 metres. And then um, we'll give him a couple of days to get over that. Then he'll jump on a truck to Sydney. Mm -hmm. um, then he, so then he trials, um, basically trials nine days after his first trial. He have a second mm -hmm. trial and mm -hmm. that gives him about 11 days to his first run. So it's, it's nice spacing. It just allows him to, um, have one trial this way, one trial Sydney way, and then yeah. he'll have a, a, a total Sydney campaign. Um, so I, I think his one pit tonight might be a heavy track. Um, yeah. And it's a bit of a toss, toss of the coin um, in Sydney, uh, particularly looking at recent history. It's either heavy or it's it's a good track, and we hope we get a good track on the day. Yeah, that kind of throws things at times. The, the it does, and it does for all horses. So we just any anyway. He is grey. I know he's grey, and they they typically like wet tracks. But um, I think I'd I'd be more confident on a good track. Anyway, he's just he's a very good race horse, and um, we do hope he wins the Everest. But um, there are also other races to win beyond the Everest. There's the there's the um there's the winners stakes, which is run after the Everest for horses that compete in the Everest, and there's yeah. just fantastic money at the top level for these good horses so um i do hope he's lucky for the new owners absolutely that that's that's that that's exactly what you want to hear um what are your sort of plans when it comes to the atmosphere because obviously everest is going everest day is going to be mad in terms of the crowd that's expected do you think that's going to sort of hamper hinder yeah well it's Everest Day is probably the coolest moment I've ever had on a race course. When Jack Cano ran uh -huh. and uh, we sent him out onto the track, um, they played um, Neil Diamond's um, uh, Sweet Caroline, and it, we didn't know it was coming on. It's become uh -huh. a thing now, but it really caught us by surprise, and it was the most amazing atmosphere, 40,000 people all singing the song. It was the coolest build-up. Um, the horses had no idea because they were on the other side of the course, but um, – I, I think he'll be okay. You know, he's he's already had five runs as a two-year-old, so he's quite experienced for a young horse. Uh, and he's raced on on Perth's biggest day, just about. So when he won the Karakata Plate, yeah. um, that was that was Quokka Day. It's one of the bigger days at Ascot Racecourse. Right. Um, I'm told he handled that day really well. Uh -huh. And um, I, I think he'll be okay. Um, he's possibly a horse that might wear a set of pre-race earmuffs just to block out any external yeah. noise that might, um, that might, um, you know, increase his nervous energy. But yeah. um, I think he's a, he's a pretty cool customer. I think he'll, I think he'll be okay. Um, yeah. We'll see, you know, we've only had him for um, in our care directly for two months. So we're still learning about him, but I, I do think he'll be okay. And certainly we'll learn more about him um, in his first two runs for us um, next month. Next month. Makes perfect sense. And what are your other spring targets for your other horses? Other horses in the stable? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So, um, yeah. So our well, our other big guns in the stable. Uh, I'll start with Warmonger. So Warmonger won the Group One Queensland Derby by ten and a half lengths. It was quite impressive. And he, his target is the Caulfield Cup. So he's okay. um he's gonna uh he's He's a very lightly raced, progressive stayer. We don't know where his ceiling is yet. He's still on the improve. Mm -hmm. um, it's a big, it's a big jump from three-year-old Derby to Open um, Caulfield Cup, where you yeah. might see some very fancy European or international runners, you know, whether right. it be from Europe or Japan, uh, come down. Um, so he's got to keep improving, but he's going really well. He's going to kick off in the Maccabi Diva Stakes then run the Turnbull Stakes, both Group 1s, and then third up into the Caulfield Cup. And beyond yeah. that, we'll just have a look at him and work out if he's ready enough for the Melbourne Cup. Um, wow. He's only an immature horse still, and he's got to he's got to come through the Caulfield Cup well. Mm -hmm. um, our other um, main uh, mare in the stable is Vibrant Sun. She won the Group yeah. 1 South Australian Oaks uh, in the autumn. Uh, yeah. We're going to keep her to a mile, this preparation. So... 
her main yeah. target will be um, either on November 2nd in Sydney, okay. either the Golden Eagle or in Melbourne, the Group 1 Empire Rose, which is the mile mares race at Flemington on Derby Day. So um, they're her main targets, and hopefully okay. along the way we can win some nice races. Wow. Those are big races. They're not nothing. You've got the Everest on the one hand and if the Golden Eagle happens and that's a completely, you know, oh, similar dreaming's, sort of... Dreaming's for free. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I like yeah. the way you think. Well, that's the end of my questions and hopefully we'll have another chat once you win the Everest. Fingers crossed. Yeah, fingers crossed. Um, If you want any more information or want to clarify an answer, just, just email me and I'll type back anytime. Sounds like a plan. Done. Will do. When I get into the research mode, I definitely might have some more yeah. questions and write back to you. Plus, we might we, he might have had a trial, you know, since so because he's trialing on Monday, so we might have some more recent um information. Information. For example, so, I yeah. will write back. Okay. Thank you so much. Thanks. Have a good afternoon. Take care. I'll see you. Bye -bye. Bye -bye.